And um, this is in part uh, to let you know that when we get to the question and answer session, which will happen at the end of this training session, um, your questions and answers will be recorded. Um, we do uh, that so that folks who are not able to join us live do have the benefit of your questions because you do often ask very good questions. Um, so please note that whether you choose to um, type your question into the chat or join us over the phone during the Q&A portion, um, that will be recorded. Um, so having said that, I am still having some challenges here. Uh, for some reason, connecting to the session. So give me just one moment. Okay, and I'm back in. Sorry about that, you guys. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and get to the uh, first, the next slide. All right, um, so we're going to cover real quickly our objectives for today's training and what we hope that you learn. I'm going to give you uh, a quick overview about some of the features that we're going to discuss. And then we have um, Wade Gale and Tohid Ali from the Bank of New York Mellon, who are going to provide you a live demonstration of those functions in the portal um, via the Access Management Console. Um, we're going to talk to you about what resources are available to you if you need assistance, and then we're going to open up for Q&A. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So today, um, this training, as I mentioned, is designed for organization administrators in the MyGenieMA portal. Um, and we're going to provide you some guidance on um, now that you are in the portal and able to create um, end user accounts um, and you're able to assign functional roles to those end user accounts, how do you track the status of those requests? Um, there are some reports in the portal that are going to help you and we hope that by sharing the information today, you'll better understand how to do that. Um, we're going to share some information about how to manage end user accounts. There are some things that you're going to be able to do um, when it comes to enabling and disabling account access, um, you know, for users uh, in your organization. We're going to give you some information on how to troubleshoot um, when your users are having problems um, and then where you can go to get help if you need some assistance. And we are going to, as I mentioned, give you an overview of the reports that are available via the Access Management Console um, to help you understand the status of any particular user account, um, even generate a, a report um, of the active users in the portal for your organization. Next slide. Okay, so um, this is uh, not strange to you. You've seen this several times if you joined any of our other Jenny May, uh, My Jenny May presentations. This is our onboarding workflow, um, and there are, you know, several steps in the workflow that you've already participated in, um, you know, whether you had a registration invitation sent to you so that you could fill out that form um, and have an account created for yourself, or whether you've been sending registration invitations to your end users and approving those invitations and requesting functional roles. Um, this workflow is exactly what you're doing as you are working in the portal to create uh, user accounts and assign um, functional roles to those user accounts. What we're going to focus on today is how you manage those accounts when they, once they've been created. So we're assuming that Org Admin 1 has sent a registration invitation, the end user has completed that registration invitation, and then a second Org Admin has approved that registration invitation. Everything that we're going to discuss today would be um, on the access portion or later of, the, of that workflow. So please do understand that we are assuming that registration is already complete. The registration workflow has been completed and the user has an account in my Ginny May. The steps that we'll cover, um, you know, talk about whether you need to, um, uh, you know, assign a new functional role, um, if the account has gone inactive, or you need to um, add an RSA token, um, anything that you would need to do after the account has been created via the registration workflow, okay? So um, now that we've said that, let's go ahead and jump into the next slide. 
Okay. So just a reminder, um, although this is uh, needs a little bit of work here on my red, red ink, but just a reminder on what it is that um, you can do as an organization administrator. That middle column um, with those stars is, are all of the functions that you as an organization administrator are able to complete on behalf of end users in your organization. Um, and these are the functions that you are now responsible for. As you can see, the operations administrator at the Bank of New York Mellon um, is only able to provide final acknowledgement of access requests for functional roles, um, you know, uh, in, for, on behalf of end users. Now, operations administrators are solely responsible for onboarding an organization administrator as part of um, this initial push to get you into My Junie May. Um, but point forward it is the organization administrator that manages um, all of these other functions, initiating a registration invitation, approving or rejecting, um, all of those functions that you see with those stars lined up for the organization administrator are the functions that you would complete. In today's presentation, we're going to focus on what we call management activities. So we're going to focus on um, discussing how to remove a functional role from an end user account. Um, so for example, if an end user um, maybe moved to another part of the business, um, you know, um, and needs a new role assigned to them, um, or needs a role removed from them, their business functions have changed, how do you remove that functional role? Um, again, keeping in mind that you don't want any user to have more access than is required by their job function. We're going to talk to you about how to enable and disable, lock and unlock end user accounts and those functions in the Access Management Console, how you can reset a password on behalf of an end user, um, and we're also going to talk about how to update account attributes, um, like a user's phone number, business title, or even add an RSA token after the account has been created. Okay, next slide. Um, everything that we're discussing today is going to take place um, from the user management tile in the Access Management Console. If you've attended our other org admin training on how to onboard end users into the portal, you'll know that um, it's the access of the new user registration uh, tile is where you focus all of the work that you do, most of the work that you do to um, get those users, you know, set up and send those registration invitations um, and manage uh, pending approvals is where you manage those pending approvals approvals, you know, in order to approve functional roles, so on and so forth. The functions that we're going to cover today for managing an end user account um, reside in that user management tile. So you're going to see Wade and Toheed go to that tile to um, access all of the uh, functions that they're going to show you today. Next slide. They're also going to um, talk to you about uh, reports. Um, and when you go to the top of your screen from the Access Management Console and you select links, it'll, you'll have a drop down that will allow you to get to what are called security reports. These are reports that are available to you as an organization administrator so that you can um, track and manage the status of user accounts in the, in the portal on behalf of your organization. There are some accounts that are custom reports and some accounts that are standard reports. The type of report isn't so much um, of a concern for you, but knowing what information is in those reports so that you can get to the information that you need and create the reports that are going to help you um, is more important. And there are a couple of reports in particular that are very important to know about. And so he and we are going to show you those a little bit later on in this presentation. Next slide. And a little bit later on is right about now. Wade, Tohid, can you take over from here? Thank you, Leticia. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. So as Leticia said, we're going to try to do the drive-in, oh, Lord. Wade is going to – I think I'm going to ask Toyi to stare because um, I don't drive, so let's try and, and get this going. As I'm sure everybody right now is actually – has org admins. You have been actually setting up your users giving them those functional roles they need, do the approvals, and waiting for us to do the finalization. So we're just going to give you an idea of what, of course, those are the four tiles that everybody will see. And as the teacher said, we'll be concentrated mostly on the user management section. So that's where we're going to do most of your managing your end, your end users. So Tony, can we click on that, on that box? First, we're going to 
when we do get in, we're going to go in to look at some some of the statuses that you might have noticed over your last three weeks, four weeks of actually getting your end users into the system. Once an access record is submitted, the system adds the functional roles to the user profile with a status of pending. And of course, the role is not provisioned to the user unless necessary approvals are, are completed. Of course, you have, you have heard us said so many times, you add the role, a second org, ad, org admin has to go in and do the approval, then it has to come to us at BNY Mellon as the ops admin to do the finalization. So we're, we're, we're going to go down to the section that has the manage user manage user permissions, and that's where you'll see these are the roles that were initially set up by the org admin. And we're just going to check through the different some of the statuses that you that you might see. We have a pending status. If there's a pending status there. I mean that function role requested is submitted and awaiting org admin approval. Then you have an approved status. That's a functional role is approved and awaiting operation admin action. Then we have a finalized status. That means functional role request has been finalized by the org admin, by the ops administrator. That's 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 a thin line, Melon. You have a confirmed status. The underlying role has been fully assigned to the users. So those are some of the roles that you you some of the statuses I should say that you'll see as, as part of your process. I notice we have another one on the system that says revoke since we'll just talk about it because you might have actually could have actually entered this by by mistake. And you want to make sure that Wade Gale doesn't need this functional role so you can actually go in as a or admin and, and re revoke that role. And since I'm on this, I just want to say something. I've noticed over the couple of sessions that or activity that we've been doing here at BNY Mellon as the ops admin, we notice that users tend to give the end user an authorized signer role and a basic user role. And if you don't need to actually give both. If you're an authorized signer, you don't need to actually get the basic basic user role because all of those functionality are, are actually a part of the authorized signer. And so just want to let you know that. So you don't have to clutter your your desktop with all those unnecessary functional roles if you don't need them. So that's that's just one of the things. One more thing we want to make sure you understand this process is also, by, the, by clicking on, on by the role name, it also gives you the role display overlay. So it gives you an idea. You can track the information here. So it tells you who the so – display the name of the, of the roles, give the request date, the requester, the approval date, the approver, the finalized date, the finalizer, and, and then the final thing is, is the status. So you can actually check this on your own to just to be sure that everything is, does show it as confirmed. So you, you can do that for all, all the functional roles that, that were given to, to, the, to your end users. After that's done, you can actually close that. So you really want to concentrate, just make sure you do have the statuses right. If you see something pending, you know you definitely have to reach out to your next org admin and say, hey, you need to, do, you need to go in and do your due diligence on this so this role can be fully operational. So, so you, because, of course, Letitia had shown you the, the process flow. So there's certain things everybody has to touch something before it can be functional so it can work for the end user. So you just want to make sure everybody gets into that. Okay. So. Now we're into the add the functional role. If an end user requires a new functional role, 
They may be done from the user management tile in the AMC. So, Tony, can you sh just go down and see it? Right now, this is, this is a section where it says request access. You should be able to go in there and, and, and click, click on that and go straight to up, set it up the find those functional roles for that user and actually do actually give that person the, the functional roles that's needed as part of their pro to process their daily work. So you should be able to do that there from that screen. The picture that we're showing around does not give us access, but you should be able to. So do we have any user that we can show them that it just goes straight to that? Um, and I'm I, putting you on the spot right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, I have another account we can use. That one doesn't show it either. Yes. Okay, good. There, so right from that screen, you can click on Request Access. And what it does, it takes you right into for you to do your those functional request access. So you don't have to, if you're currently in this screen, you don't have to get out and, and go to that tile that says Access. So you just can go in and, and do it from right here. And just a reminder, we're in UAT, so it takes a while before it spins and, 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 and gets to that page. Cool. There it is. Now, as an as a org admin, you can go in and, and, and do your, your functional role selection for that user. So this is just a diff another way of getting to that access tile so you don't have to actually go out and, and, and I click on, on the, the tile itself. Okay, the next thing we have to do is it says uh, remove a functional role. If an end user is no longer requ required access to a specific functional role, possibly because their business responsibility might have changed, organization admin are responsible to removing that role from the user account. This may be done within the management user permission section. We're going to go to Harry Wade and see, after looking through Harry Wade, we find out that Harry Wade does not need basic, he does not need, he actually doesn't do loan delivery, none at all. And, but he, they gave him both, no, he does loan delivery, let me change that. He does loan delivery, and what I'd mentioned earlier, but he's not a, so we need to get rid of the basic user role. So we're going to first we do the select, and then we do remove. And then we want to do, are you sure you want to remove this? Of course, it gives you, make sure that's what you want to do. And then once, if you agree, you click and confirm. And then, of course, it goes through its own little stuff behind the scenes so that information can so you does the or admin the second one need to approve this? No. Once it's no. removed, um it will be uh in revoked status. Okay, good. So this might be something that org admin might be doing as they go along in setting up the process for the end users. It could be just just a regular mistake, or oh, I should not have given Wade that that access at all. Let me just go in and and remove it. So you do have so you do have the ability to to change that, and and that's the remove the functional role from the from that screen. Okay. We've actually moved, removed the functional role. The status should have changed, but of course it takes a while. So we're in UAT, so it would have changed to revoked. That's what we're actually looking for. So you see that revoked action there. That's what is going to come up on that on that users on users screen. Okay, we have done that. We have done the revoked, and then we realize that as a this user wants to do some update to their profile. 
there's certain things you can touch here as an org admin. There's certain things we don't allow you to. Like the anything in gray is grayed out, so you won't be able to go into those fields. You know, this one you point to to get a little red circle and line in between. But you can change a person's title if you want to change that. And also, when initially when you were setting up this user, you did not give them their RSA token information. Now you can also do that. So if you click on yes, it's now required. You put in that nine-digit RSA token serial number. That's on the back of your current RSA fob. So you'll find it and you put that in. If you the person wants their okay, there's that number. The person wants their mobile phone number there, you can actually add that also. And their work number is by some we just put in the wrong number there. They can go in and, and make and make change and make changes. Make changes to that screen. So so those are some of the fields you can make changes to. And if it's not in the right format, you'll also get a message in, in red at the bottom saying it it's it it doesn't fit the format that it's looking for. So that's that's updating and you want to make sure once that's done you want to update you want to make sure you 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 save that record. So did you want to say something here about the RSA token? Uh yes, thank you, Wade. Um just a few things here where um you enter your RSA token um, there is an email that is sent out to the uh, org admins. So say when you first register um, and you enter your serial number during the registration, a email will be sent out to operations to um, associate that token to your account. But um, however, just like this user uh, who did not enter their serial number, um, the org admin has the ability to enter it for them and doing so every time um, a new functional role is assigned to this user uh, the org admin will receive an email uh, requesting to provide the token serial number and um, send it to operations to associate and a quick example I will uh, share on the screen is the email that you would receive as an org admin here, uh, asking you to provide your serial number with the user's information and their um, GMAP1 ID and JennyNet ID. Um, another th uh, thing, quick thing for you to uh, note here is that you'll be able to deregister uh, the Oracle Mobile Authenticator for any reason if the user is not able to do it themselves, which they do have the uh, ability to, uh, you can uh, assist uh, and deregister their account here. And this is used for the uh, one-time PIN um, when you opt in instead of the email. Um, that was it, Wade. You can uh, continue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And just to piggyback on that a little bit, it's org admins. It's very, very important that you pay attention to those emails, especially the RSA token ones, because if you initially had set up your RSA token for that user, we'll get that information straight so we can do the provision. But once you edit and go back in and add that, that token, the workflow doesn't follow the, the, the full the full step. So the information is going to come to you, and you as the org admin need to follow the instructions and get that information to us at BN1 Mellon so that user can be provisioned and they have access to do their submission either being in, in RFS when they're doing their certification or on Geninet or MFPDM when they're when they're doing their pool submissions. Okay, now this is a common question that we used to get. I notice I said used to because in the system now is supposed to be self-service or all of these administrative functions is now supposed to happen in the org admin space. And I'm talking about unlock or lock account. We do get it a lot, so I'll just try and give you some explanation here. A user can become automatically locked out of their account due to three fail password attempt. Or if an org admin 
has manually locked the, the account via AMC. Locking a user's account is a temporary action and can be reverted. So right at the bottom there, you see the word lock. So we can actually, for instance, we can lock your account if we want to. Because it could be that person has not been in for a while or the person might be moving on to a different job. So we can do that lock. Confirm that it's locked. And of course, we want to see that the status say user successfully locked. And of course, again, we are in the UAT, so it does take a while to, to change. And you notice you'll see that's the sign that tells you lock. You see that padlock there? That will give you the clue that it's locked. And if you point at it again, tell you it says locked. So that user is currently locked. So let's see if we can go in and unlock that person. And you, of course, you'll get that message when you're when you're trying to when the user is trying to log in. Right now, you see it says they're unlocked. So let's click on unlock so that person can get access to logging into MGM and continue to do their workflow. So again, those are some of the things that you're going to say, oh, let me call Wade's team. Yeah, Wade's team is going to say, uh-oh, we can't do this anymore. It's up to be your responsibility now to unlock your end users. If you had called us as a org admin, we are willing to help you on doing that. But we're going to defer those, those requests on your end users. It will be now your responsibility to do that. But you can always call us and say hi. We'll appreciate it any time. OK. Now, another thing is going through disable and, and enable a user. A user account may become automatically disabled due to the 90-day 90 days of inactivity. Enable the account and advise the user to log into general within 24 hours once the account has been enabled. That's a, that's a real thing you want to make sure you tell your users. Not because we're going to enable your account. If you have not logged in, if the end user did not log in after that account has been disabled, is enabled, it's going to go right back to the original status of disable again. So you just want to make sure you, you, you are aware of that. Or the account will often be disabled again. So of course, you want to be sure that that doesn't happen. Organ admin should manually disable a user account if the user has left the organization or the other organization's specific reasons such as a change in role. Of course, that person does not use MGM anymore because they have moved on. You want to, you want to disable them from the system. And let's show I'm sorry, Tony, I think I'm talking too much to your head of me. Disable. That's, this user is disabled. We go in and click on disable and disable the account. And Tony, what happened here when the accounts are disabled? What what happened to those functional roles? So once a user is, is disabled, all the functional roles um, will go to the um, status where it will be um, revoked. And so, or missing. Or missing. Um, and if that happens um, and somehow the user uh, does come back to the organization, those um, functional roles will have to be re-requested. Good. Thank you, sir. So that, yes, that is true. You're gonna, when you go into that screen, you're going to notice that the roles might say missing, and you'll have to re-request re them, and then have to go through the, the function of being approved again, and then finalize so that person can have full access. So you just want to keep in mind that. And again, Enable, disable all the responsibility of our 
new org admin to MGM. And you guys are going to have fun doing this, I'm sure. Okay. <clears throat> Next slide, enable. So that person now should have access. And of course, we always encourage, you know, after 90 days, your account is going to get disabled if you're not using the, if you're not logging in the account on a regular basis. And I think is on the 81st day, you start getting notices. So you want to also uh, pay attention to those notices because you're going to get a reminder your account is getting ready to be to be expired or whatever the empire paraphrased in the actual notice. But I think it's on the 81st day you start getting notices in reference to that. Okay, so we have enabled that user. And now the next thing to, you have enabled the user and now the user does not remember their password. And that is such a common occurrence as on, in my world in terms of calls that we get sometime, don't know the, I don't remember my password, so we'll tell you what you can do here. And again, this is not something you'll call us for the end users. It will be strictly you taking care of them on, on, in your space. The service is used as an event that the user has forgotten their password and is unable to reset the, using the self-service capabilities or they suspect their account has been compromised. So you can go in right where you see the word right up there, it says, or the tab, reset password. You're going to click on that, and what happens right here, it, are you sure you want to reset a password? For user, a new randomly generated password will be created and emailed to the user. So the user will have to look out for that password. It's not like in the GeniNet space that the password is generated and you tell them what it is. In, uh, in, 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 in GMAP, the password is generated and you either copy it and, and send it to them via email. No, this password is going to be sent strict, straight to their email with, uh, and they would have to retrieve that password and put it in the new system and put it in the system and also generate an, a new one. So that's a little bit different. So this is all you, you're doing now. It's not us anymore at BNY Mellon as an org, as an ops admin. It's going to be your responsibility to, to reset the users if they could not do it through self-service. Password successfully was reset successfully. Okay, so we have done some little managing activities there, reset password, unlock, enable, update profile. Now, we as org admin also have some other responsibilities because you might want to some reports on your end users. As Leticia had mentioned first earlier, you go to link and then you choose security reports. On the security reports, you're going to go to where it says the catalog folder. And we're going to choose the administrative folder. And this one here, we're going to look, we're going to look at the MC functional role request history report. So that's one of the reports that, that we want you to to look at. And of course, this is where you have all the other reports if you want. So we're just going to check on that. And as I told you, it's pointing to open. So let's click on open. And it's processing. So this is the report that comes up and, and show you information on, on, your actual, on, on your actual users. Toyi, do you want to explain this a little bit more than I can? I know I might miss something. Sure, Wayne. 
So once you select the uh, uh, report you uh, want to see, the system will generate, and here you will have a layout with the uh, different columns of different information. So you see you have your uh, require ID, user login, role name, role type, and you can filter this report um, based on the column. So if you click here on the drop-down, um, you can select a specific user, or you can select uh, an ascending or descending order based on how you want to see your report. Um, and this goes um, same for, say, uh, the approver or the date or uh, whichever column you would like. Now, you also have the option to export this report into PDF or um, Excel. Now, do note when you do uh, export to Excel, uh, the report will not generate the way you would see it um, after you sort or filter on your screen. You will have to um, do the filtration on Excel. And the way you would do it is by clicking here um, where you have different options such as PDF, HTML, um, or Excel like I mentioned. Wait. Okay. Thank you. And there's one more report we want to show you, to, so you can get an idea. What and this is the uh, how to create an active user account report. So now when we're going to go to the Oracle. We're going to click on where it says Home Org. Home organization user lists by org admin view. We're going to click. We're going to open those. We're just giving you an idea what some of the reports are. So this one kind of gives you all the users that are actually enrolled in your home org and Toid. So here, like I mentioned earlier, you will um, have the option to say you want to only see the active users. You can just select um, active. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me do that again. So for the status, you can select here um, that you only want to see active users. So you can select um, active and click OK. So this report will only show the active users. And the same applies if you want to see the uh, disabled users. So here you'll see the list, and every single person here is disabled. And what about if you're in the section that says org admin? If you want to know anybody who is org admin, what is that the same thing by yes or no? Yes. So it's the same. Same option. So the reason you see no here is because um, there is uh, no other org admin, which is why only no is available. But if there right. was, that is, again, you have to um, note that only the disabled users. So there is another org admin, but that person is not disabled. That is why you're not seeing it here. So say if we were to go back to selecting all active and disabled, and then going back to the org admin, you now will have yes or no option. Cool. Okay. So just want to, again, as the, as as the org admin, just want to you have the ability to go in and print some of your report. Maybe you might even be able to customize them just to suit your needs. Of course, we have the some of the reports, home org user list report. That's a custom report. You have user profile history. That's a standard report. User registration request history, that's a custom report. So you can go in and, and print accordingly, because some of them might be because of auditing purposes. Sometimes auditors want to know how who are the ones who are locked who are logged in or the ones who got messed up with their password. So you so you can have different reports to suit your 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 internal off company's need. So I think that was our little journey. I hope it wasn't too bumpy. I hope you were able to – I think we navigated okay. We just might have missed a couple stoplights there, but I think we got through okay. So 
Happy MGM, and I'm going to pass it on back to Letitia. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that demo. Um, so now we're at a point in our presentation where we're um, going to open up for a question and answer session. A um, couple things uh, as we uh, go ahead and move to the next slide. A couple things as we uh, move on to our Q&A. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we do have a poll that um, we would like to launch so that we can collect your feedback on um, how things went today. If there were items that um, you felt like we didn't cover that you want more information on, or if maybe we covered something a little quicker than you needed us to cover it, um, please make sure that you give us that feedback in the poll. Um, also, um, please do take the time to you know join us for this Q&A and answer ask any questions that requires follow-up information. So if you go to your chat, um, from the bottom of your screen, you're going to hear see a, an icon that says chat. Um, and there is a link in there to take the poll. We take your feedback extremely seriously. Um, your feedback to our polls actually makes it way all the way up the chain to the president of our organization. So do take the time to um, provide us some feedback using that poll. Also, in the meantime, please note that um, there are several places that you can go to get additional information. If you go to the modernization page on the Ginny Mae website. Um, if you are on GinnyMae.gov, Ginny you hover over issuers. Um, drop down underneath issuer training is a section called modernization. We have a section dedicated to My Ginny Mae where all of our user materials, um, the training uh, dates, the recordings from the trainings, the training presentations, including today's presentation, will all be made available on the modernization page of the Ginny Mae website. So please do reference the Ginny Mae website um, as your initial source for information on this effort. Also, every Thursday that we do not have a planned training session, we are hosting weekly listening sessions. This is kind of like office hours where you have an opportunity to call in, ask us questions. We do have experts on the line. Um, give us feedback on the portal, how your onboarding effort is going, if you're having any issues, um, items of concern, areas where we can provide additional information and clarity. Um, we also offer up some best practices and ask for some feedback from you on those sessions. Do join us for those weekly listening sessions every Thursday. The call details are available on the Ginny Mae website um, in the modernization section under um, My Ginny Mae. Um, do call in, join us for those sessions, let us know if you have any questions or need additional information. Um, if you're having some technical issues, maybe getting into the portal, onboarding your end users, problems with the system, uh, reach out to Ginny Mae Customer Support. That's Wade and his team, and they do a fantastic job of making sure that they can get you the information that you need and keep you up and running. So definitely reach out to Ginny Mae Customer Support. Um, their new number is one eight three three gnma help That's one eight three three four six six two four three five. 466 Or you can send them an email, Ginny Mae one at bnymellon.com. That, has, that uh, email address has not changed, and they're happy to assist you with all of your technical questions about the portal and the applications in the portal. If you have general questions about training, user materials, where to find these presentations, um, uh, general feedback about the portal, um, you can reach me in the customer experience group at cxg at hud.gov, cxg at hud.gov. We are also monitoring that mailbox and happy to help with um, any issues or questions that you might have. Do you note know that there are not technical experts available at cxg um, at hud.gov, um, so we're generally not able to assist with your technical questions, um, but happy to provide, connect you to um, the customer support team or do whatever we can to assist you otherwise, okay? Um, so having said that, and there are a couple ways that you can join us today um, for Q&A. If you joined this session using the audio on your computer, at the bottom of your screen, there is an icon that allows you to raise your hand. That indicates to us that you would like for us to unmute your line so that you can ask a question. Um, so if you join the audio today using the um, computer, please go down to the bottom of the screen and select raise your hand so that we know to unmute your line. If you joined us today using a telephone line, you can hit 
star nine on your phone line, and that will give us an indication that you would like to ask a question, and we can unmute your line that way. Um, so those are the two ways that you can join us um, with uh, asking a question, um, you know, on the line or on the computer audio. If you are a little bit shy and would rather type that question into a box, at the bottom of your screen there is a Q&A. You are welcome to type a question. If you would prefer to ask your question um, by typing it, you can do that through the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. Um, so again, uh, star nine if you joined us on a phone line, raise your hand from the bottom of the screen if you're on your computer audio, or type it into the uh, Q&A and we will answer your questions right now. And do we have any questions online? Yeah, it looks like we got uh, two people here. Um, Sorry if I mispronounce this, uh, Nakia Johnson. I just uh, allowed you to talk, so if you just unmute your line on the uh, the Zoom, you should be able to to chat with us. There you go. Hi. Good morning. You did say that correct. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning. I just wanted to know: Did I miss a previous email where we were given a different uh, website we should be using, or new login information? So it'll depend on what wave your organization is being onboarded in. Right now we are in wave two where we are onboarding our single family issuers except for the very small issuers and our subservicers. Wave one was multifamily issuers. Um, so if you are in one of those waves, uh, we did release information via our training and emails to organization administrators about accessing my.ginnymay.gov. That's the um, URL for the new portal. So it's my.jennymay.gov, and that's where you would go to log into the new portal. Are you an organization administrator with your organization, meaning were you a formerly um, a security officer or enrollment administrator? Yes, I believe I was set up that way. Okay. So um, you would have uh, received an email invitation inviting you to set up an account in My Jenny May. Did you get that email? I wonder, would it have, could it have been back as far as February 20th? Um, it would have been, uh, yes, it, it, uh, we started sending registration invitations for wave two on February 18th, and we would have been sending them out um, the duration of that week. So the registration invitation is only good for 24 hours. If you did not reply when you initially received it, it's not valid anymore anyway. So you should reach out to Wade's team, the Ginnie Mae customer support team, and have them uh, send you another invitation while you're in the office and able to respond. Okay, I'll do that, thank you. Okay, perfect, thank you. Do we have other questions on the line? Uh, yeah, we got one from uh, Jennifer Eschelbacher. Go ahead and unmute. There you go. You okay, there we go. Hi, I just had a quick question. So we are still in the process of boarding our previous security officers as um, org admins. And um, we are going to start uh, adding the end user roles for those organization admins um, here in the next week or so. Uh, in doing that, uh, we currently, to the best of my knowledge, we have four security officers that all need end user access. So uh, when we do that, I know one of us has to put in the request for their end user roles, and then another security or another org admin is going to come in and approve those roles, and then it comes to BNY Mellon to do the finalization of those roles, correct? Got it, yes. Okay, right. Okay. so with that question, um, how is it, and this is just purely curiosity, so we can kind of you know, keep everybody in the loop, hey, be looking for these emails. How is it determined what um, org admin, so you have the one putting in the request, then you have another one um, that's going to approve the request. How is it determined the, uh, how's it going to be determined what org admin is going to approve those requests? 
That's entirely up to your organization and how you decide to set up your internal workflow. So um, the, the workflow as it's provided by the portal does not require um, one admin to be a requesting admin all the time and another admin to be an approving admin all the time. Um, what is required is that whoever requests cannot then approve their own request. So um, I know at Jenny May, with our organization administrators, we've set up internal protocols um, so that each organization administrator knows what they are responsible for so that um, end users, when they need a, uh, an account set up or a functional role requested, they know wh who to go to. So it's the same person. So it makes it easier for our end users. But the workflow in the portal does not require that. Any organization administrator can send a request or an invitation or make a request, and then any other organization administrator can approve that request. Um, but if at any point in time that changes um, and, you know, and, and if, you know, you decide that you want to now um, be the approver in this particular workflow, you can do that. Okay, so, so all uh, org admins are going to see those requests out there. It's just up to us to say, hey, you're going to do this piece and another Correct. org admin is going to do the next piece. Okay, that's what yeah. I wanted the to because, let me because, clarify. I'm sorry, let me clarify real quick. The only org admin who will not get a notification that a request needs to be approved is the org admin who made the request. Okay, okay. So that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Not a problem. Thanks for asking. Uh -huh. Ian, do we, do we have other questions on the line? Uh, nope. Uh, actually, yes. Just one came in uh, from Jim Harrelson. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Um, as an org admin, we have two others. So there's three of us. Is it correct that when I go in, um, we've already done our registration, but when I go in, I don't see myself. Is it correct that I'm not seeing that, obviously, because I can't access and alter my own persona? Um, well, it depends on, on what, what you're looking for. Try, try me again. So you're an organization administrator, correct? Correct. And if I go in and look at users, I don't see myself. Okay, so do you have a functional role assigned to you? Aside, uh, being an organization administrator is a security privilege. Um, it is not a functional role. Do, or do you also have a functional role as a uh, end user in the system? I do not. So I need one of the other two to set myself up as a user, correct? Yeah, Perfect. well, that is why... You Go yeah, ahead. that is why you are not showing on the functional role history report because you don't have a functional role. All right, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Not a problem. Are there other questions on the line? Not at this time. Okay, I do have a couple questions in the chat that I'm going to go ahead and answer out loud. Um, and wait, I might need your help on one of these. Um, so. I'm sorry. So Julie Peters is asking, um, besides deactivating a user account, um, can a user be deleted from the system? Currently, where the system is set up, the user, it, it can be deleted, but that would have to be something in the back end, the way the system is set up right now. The person, the user, the org admin cannot do a deletion of that, that user. Yeah, so to, to, to take that a step further, Julie, um, what that means is um, the system keeps an audit trail of all of the user accounts that were ever set up in the portal. So generally, we do not quote unquote delete a user from the system because we always want record of when and how they access the portal. Um, but you don't have to delete a user account in order to make it um, inactive as you already um, you know, alluded to in your question. 
So if you need to completely deactivate a user because they no longer need access to the portal, you would deactivate them. Um, if it's a, a situation where you need to temporarily block a user for any reason, um, you can lock the account um, and then unlock it later when you want them to have access again. Um, but in terms of actually deleting the record from the system, um, we generally don't do that for record keeping purposes and audit trail purposes. That user will stay, the record of that user will stay in the portal. Um, okay, uh, let's see, next question. Does an organization administrator have to be a security officer? Um, the short answer is no. Um, if you are not a security officer in our legacy systems, a security officer or enrollment administrator in our legacy systems, you can now be added to my Jenny May as an organization administrator. That does require that you be on the HUD 11702, um, at the Board of Resolution. So if you're not on the Board of Resolution, you'll want your organization to add you on the HUD 11702. Um, and then there is a request form for you to be added as a security or as an organization administrator in my Jenny May. Um, you can talk contact WAVE's team, um, Jenny May Customer Support Team, uh, for additional information and that form if you need to be added. Um, next question, are end users able to see the status of requested roles? That's a great question, Veronica. Um, the answer is no. Um, only organization administrators who have access to the Access Management Console are able to see um, reports in the system. So what end users receive is actually um, a confirmation email. So once their account has been set up um, and functional, they, they get a, a welcome to the portal email. And once functional roles have been um, assigned and finalized by the Bank of New York Mellon on behalf of Ginny May, they receive a functional role notification email. And that is how the end user is notified that they have an account and that they have a functional role. Um, if later a new functional role is added, they again receive that notification informing them that a new functional role has been added to their account, but they don't actually um, track the status of those requests um, throughout the life cycle of the workflow. Um, that is only for um, my privileged users um, who are organization administrators that have access to the Access Management Console. Um, the next question I have here, can users request a new token um, for one that has expired? Um, so, Tammy, um, your token should not expire. Um, the team at the Bank of New York Mellon, there's an RSA team uh, that, that manages those RSA tokens. And um, those tokens, they do track and, and they should not expire. But if that did happen, where you have a hard token that for some reason has expired, um, please reach out to Ginny May customer support um, to be connected with the RSA token team so that they can um, you know, resolve that situation for you, um, but your token should not actually expire. Um, to the second half of your question, um, if you need a, to get a new token, um, then I would assume that that means that at the time that your MyGenieMay account was established, you did not have a, an RSA token to enter into that field when you were completing your new user registration form. So if you have to go back in after your account has been established to enter that information um, that does need to be done by your organization administrator unless you are an organization administrator, you can contact the operations administrator um, at the at Ginny May customer support. But that would need to be, that information would need to be added by an organization administrator. And as Wade and Toheed mentioned earlier in their presentation, um, you will get an email that will walk you through additional steps. You have to follow up with sending an email message to Wade's team in order to connect that token to your new My Ginny May account. So again, um, if, if your token shouldn't have expired, but if it did, um, the Bank of New York Mellon team at Ginny May Customer Support can assist you. If you need to add a new token, again, um, the Ginny May Customer Support team at the Bank of New York Mellon can assist you. Um, so let's see. Uh, so I have someone who answered, asked a question about having a third security officer that needs to be on the HUD 11700, uh, oh, the 1120. Um, okay, let's 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification. They meant the HUD 11702. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yes, if you, we do recommend and, and may very well in the very near future require that every organization have a third organization administrator. The workflow here is very different from how you managed work as an um, administrator in our, our legacy system. If for any reason an end user's account has gone inactive, meaning they have not used their account or logged in in the last 90 days, what happens is that account is disabled and functional roles are removed. If for some reason that user urgently needed access to the portal, an organization administrator would have to enable that user's account and then re-request the functional roles for that user, which requires that a second organization administrator approve those functional roles on behalf of that, um, that user. If for any reason you do not have two organization administrators available in that sort of urgent scenario, you are in a world of trouble because the Bank of New York, um, on behalf of Ginny May, is not able to assist and intervene in end user access. Um, the other reason you would want to have three organization administrators is because if any of your organization administrators are also end users in our system, meaning they need to have a functional role assigned to them, you cannot participate in requesting or approving a functional role for yourself. So you need two other organization administrators to request and approve that functional role for you. So the workflow will require, in order to um, provide a functional role to an organization administrator, to other organization administrators to complete that workflow. So while the current MBS guide does require two security officers, um, the current workflow and potentially the future MBS guide will likely require three at a minimum. So if there are additional questions about that, please do, um, do ask at this time. Ian, do we have questions on the line? Has anyone raised their hand? Uh, yes, Veronica Darrow. Go ahead. You can unmute yourself in chat. Veronica, you might be muted. Um, if you can unmute your line um, from the bottom left hand of the screen. Go. Did we get to your question? I see that you um, typed one in the chat. If you have an additional question, please let me know. Okay, Veronica? Yeah, it looks like she's unmuted. I don't know, maybe her, uh, okay, answer. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Veronica. Is there another question on the line? Not right now. Okay. Um, let's see here. I don't see anything in the chat. I don't see anything in the Q&A. We do not have any hands that are raised. And uh, star nine, if you joined us on a phone line and want to un have us unmute your line so you can ask a question. Star nine, if you would like to unmute your phone line, uh, if you've joined us by uh, phone today um, so that you can ask a question. Please do re remember that if you open up the chat um, from the bottom of the screen, either the bottom or the, the side of your screen, um, you can uh, see the link where you can provide us feedback on today's session and your portal experience in general. Um, we're happy to get your feedback and we actually do act upon it. So when you do, you often provide us very good suggestions that either help us make enhancements in the portal or in, in um, improve our user materials. So uh, please do take a moment before you leave us to complete that um, feedback survey. Uh, this information will be posted on the Ginny Mae website on the modernization section, so do look for this presentation. You can see there is an appendix where we have um, outlined some of the steps that we covered today uh, in the live demonstration. Um, thank you, Wayne and Toheed, for that live demo. Uh, but you can also use the Access Management User Manual, which is available on the modernization page. It's a great resource with step-by-step um, -step instructions and screenshots to walk you through just about anything you'll need to do in the Access Management Console. So do use that as your first line of defense. 
Um, and as always, don't hesitate to reach out to us if there's anything we can do to assist and support you. Thank you for joining today's session um, and have a great day.